Thinking about self-publishing and don't know where to start? Join the Spa Girls each week for 30 minutes of honest advice, tips and resources. I'm Trudy J, and I am here with Shah Barrett. Hi. Cheryl Phipps. Hi there. And Wendy Vella. Hello. Hello. And this week we have an awesome guest. I'm so Yay. excited. We're going to speak to Celeste Barclay. Yay. Hello. Welcome, Celeste. Thank you for having me. Thank it's, you for being here. Yeah. Yes, just what Shah said. Um, so we're going to talk to Celeste about Author Village and how to find one, like your community of authors, which is really cool because it is definitely a question we get asked a lot. And I'm super excited to hear what you have to say, Celeste. But first, I'm going to hand it over to Shah and she's going to do your bio. Cool. So Celeste Barclay is an author of more than 27 books prim- um, in historical romance. Her popular series include the medieval The Clan Sinclair novels and the Highland Ladies series, which has an impressive 15 and counting individual books. Uh, Side note, Sinclair is one of my family names, so I'm particularly excited to see that. Uh, (laughs) Before becoming a full-time author, Celeste was a social studies and English teacher. She holds degrees in international affairs, teaching secondary social science and political management. She channels that knowledge into creating rich historical romances that bring the steam. And you can find out more about Celeste at celestebarclay.com. Welcome, Celeste. Thank you. That's awesome. I'm expecting you to bring your teacherly um, experience and knowledge yeah, here wisdom. to the spa. Yeah. Um, so yeah. <laughs> keep Trudy under control. She's yeah, keep me under control. At That's the not back. easy. That's no. always challenging yeah. the teacher with tricky questions. Yeah, I did like to sit at the back. Although, oh, actually, oh, you know, a surprise. I was yeah. the one at the front. Yeah, such a geek. Uh, I was the one at the front too. Yeah, yeah. bunch of geeks. I don't know. And Cher yeah. and I were sort of in the middle, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're well, from each by the door. I bet you guys with sat by friends. the door. <laughs> well, my maiden name started with an A, so a lot of times I didn't have a choice. Yeah, uh, yeah. sitting at the front. I, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. see, I'm B. I'm the same. So yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so going back to the actual topic. Cover that off. Um, so we we'll start with today's um, session with a little bit about you so can you talk to us about how you got into writing what made you want to write and how you got into self-publishing specifically that would be awesome I can't wait to hear it so I started reading historical romance probably about I think seven years ago or so I was covering from surgery and there were only so many episodes of the big bang theory that I could watch before I was starting to climb the walls. And I'd always been a huge historical fiction fan. I mean, since I could read chapter books, but on a whim, I decided, Hey, I'll give one of these a chance, you know, see what it's like. I maybe read one or two sort of romancy books in the past, but not anything like tried and true. And so I read it and there were a couple of like nail biting moments. And then I was like, oh, look at this happily ever after they end up together. So I was like, okay, I'll read another one. And a couple more nail biting moments. And like six books later, I finally figured out they all have a happily ever after. (laughs) I'm usually a little quicker on the uptake than that. (laughs) It took me a moment. So I became an avid reader, you know, anything I could get my hands on, whether it was, you know, Kindle Unlimited on Amazon, on Nook, through my library online. It just was a nice escapism from having to be a teacher and a mom and a wife. You know, I could just give myself a couple hours where I could be on an adventure and I could picture myself as the heroine and, you know, have my happily ever after in the matter of just a few hours. So fast forward to August, 2017, and I'm not a particularly whimsical person, but just like I picked up my first historical romance to read on a whim, I decided, you know what? I think I wanna try and write one of these. So I started the book and, you know, school went back in session. My kids went back, I went back. It just kind of got pushed to the side. I didn't tell anybody about it. You know, I figured maybe I'll get around to it. Well, January of 2018, my husband's appendix ruptured and I thought he was just man sick. 
<gasps> Turns out he was a whole lot more than that oh, and ended no. up spending two weeks in the hospital because oh, it wow. had already ruptured. Oh, no. So I was driving up and down the highway. I was going to work. I was trying to get my kids back and forth to school to my parents. Luckily, they live nearby. And by the end of that, I was just so worn out that I needed something cathartic. I needed escapism. And so I went back to that manuscript and just lost myself in the story. And, you know, as I was coming towards the end, I was kind of like, well, now what do I do? (laughs) I've got this now. What do I do with it? So I looked at my options and I am so very typically type A that I don't want to do something unless I know I'm going to do it well. And I don't want to tell anybody in case I fall on my face. (laughs) So (laughs) I almost immediately ruled out traditional publishing because I was like, I don't want rejection letters. I don't want to deal with that. (laughs) I mean, I can hear that. (laughs) Nobody's going to reject me if nobody knows. And so I also didn't tell anybody. I mean, I didn't tell my husband. I didn't tell my best friend. I didn't tell my parents. I told no one at all because if I fell on my face, only I would be there. So I started looking into the logistics of just getting a manuscript onto retailers and, you know, all the legal mumbo jumbo was just swimming around as I was trying to get the actual manuscript formatted and ready to go. And so I loaded that first one on and then I was kind of like, oh, I should probably figure out what to do next. Like, (laughs) how are people going to know about it? I mean, I am usually a planner. I did not plan going into this. And so I already had in my head several books that I wanted to write in this series. So I was like, all right, time to start on number two. And I had a few pre-orders on that. And I was so excited. I was like, we are buying it. And then by book three, I had found my village Mm -hmm. and I'd been pointed in the right direction to start learning the business side of being an author, because when you're self-published, that's like 60, 70% of the gig, you know, writing's a smaller portion than you realize. And so I started being able to join groups and find more members of my village and find resources that were explaining the business side. And between book two and book three, I obviously gained quite a bit of knowledge because book three just took off. I mean, it just went soaring. And so, you know, one book after another, and I am three years in with 27 books published and, you know, I've got two really big questions. I've got two really big questions for you. So Mm -hmm. when did you tell your husband? Yes. (laughs) And then how did you, how did you decide that you needed a village or where was that first uh, um, insight or that first person even that led you in the right direction go so uh, <laughs> I think the village actually came first wow um, how yeah. many books did you read how did your husband not know that you did he know that you were writing but just not that you'd self published? well so as a teacher and having done two graduate degrees my husband is used to me being at the computer working okay. right in the evening so I think I was done with like book two when I was like so yeah I should probably let you know that I've done this thing and I the funny thing is when I got the author proof of my very first book I do it yourself cover because I didn't know any better Uh, I took a picture of the cover and there was a couple and the woman had brown hair and I texted it to my best friend and I said so I did a thing and she was so so confused. She's like, is that you on the cover? She was just like, you need to explain. And I was like, I wrote and published a book. And so, yeah, I think it was just about when book two came out that I told my husband and he was like, well, why don't you just tell me sooner? And I was like, cause I didn't know how people would react. So you know, yeah. I should have known. That's I mean, no it, deal. <laughs> I mean it, it's utterly illogical of me to have thought that my family, even if they were surprised, wouldn't be supportive. But like yeah. I said, you, I have that fear of failure. I didn't yeah. want to tell anybody. And when you write romance, 
you know, there's the inevitable yeah. stereotypes that go along yeah. with it. And mm-hmm. I didn't want to face that like beyond my mm-hmm. immediate circle. Um, so I was cautious about that, but there was an author that I really enjoyed reading. I mean, I'm a devoted fan of hers as a reader. And I was like, all right, well, I got to talk to somebody, ask somebody about this. Apparently you need reviews. You're like, you know, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> I, yeah. I reached out to her and emailed her and was like, you know, I've been a reader and I don't know if you review books, but if you wouldn't mind reviewing mine. And she's very polite. And she's like, well, generally I don't because where do I draw the line? However, I have this Facebook group. If you would like to join. And I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> what's it called? And where's the link? So I went in and I joined and I started to kind of observe the conversations. I introduced myself, you know, I posed the question, like, how do you know if you're successful? Like, what do you think success is? And I had an author PM me and tell me a little bit about how she got started and, you know, how things were really timed well for her. And she pointed me in the direction of another Facebook group. And this Facebook group is for sweet and clean authors, but they have a podcast that they do weekly that is all about being an author and mostly about being a self-published author. So there's some, um, some craft tips in there, but there were a lot of business tips. And I found the episode with the launch plan and what you should do for that. And so that's what helped me get ready for book three. And then in that first group, another author was like, Hey, you know, why don't you come over to this mastermind group of historical romance authors? And while you're at it, There's also this reader author group that you could join and I'll even make you an admin of it. So I was like, all all right. You know, I had never (laughs) belonged to these types of groups before at all. Um, You know, I'd never had a reason to. So I joined in, I kind of observed, introduced myself and got much more comfortable with these authors. And, you know, I some of it was stumbling into it. Some of it was being like, all right, you know, pull up your britches, get on with this, you know, be outgoing and introduce yourself and comment on these posts, things along those lines. And so I started making friends and making colleagues and having some ones to turn to and ask questions of these more experienced authors. And I just found, and I know this is not true of all genres, not even within romance, but I found that in historical romance, it is a very welcoming community to new authors. It's not cutthroat of, oh, well, if you get a reader, you've taken a reader from me. It's nobody can ever write enough to satisfy every reader. So come on along. Mm-hmm. And so that really helped. And I got to a point where I felt comfortable asking like, Hey, you know, Amazon says I should price this at 269, but that's weird. I don't see anybody else pricing at 269. What do you think? You know, I'm talking about that. And like, do I do pre-orders? What's the advantage of that? And like, Oh my goodness. BookBub wants how much for a feature deal? <laughs> Oh, no, it's insane, right? It's a a whole dish of water when uh, you first see those figures. Yeah. 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 So can we, can we, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So can we take a step back? Like what I want to do first is actually, so we've started talking about the author village, but I actually want you to define what you mean by an author village, like what it, it, what it is and why it's important for authors. Um, So, yeah, because you you sort of say it's not, it's it's a kind of more detailed than just a, a surface level connection it is now group. Yeah. yeah I mean you know they say it takes a village to raise a child well apparently it takes a village to raise an author at least the <laughs> author. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know because I came in with not even training wheels on and was like yeah. all right so the author village to me is that network of authors that you either help establish or you join 
And they are people who will lend you moral support, offer you feedback on, you know, your writing, give you information or share ideas for the business side of it. It's just the authors that you know you can trust and that you respect yeah. and that you are like-minded enough to, to get along. And, you know, for me, that's not only meant that I've made friends, but it's parlayed into anthology opportunities. Mm. It's certainly increased my business by having other authors that I can do newsletter swaps with or go into their Facebook groups. I learned how to do takeovers. So the village to me is the network of authors that I feel like I belong, you know, I such mm -hmm. imposter syndrome getting started. And yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm like in with the big kids here, you know, because <laughs> there's some good, well-known ladies in my, my, or I'm part of the inner circle of, and so it was like, I'm definitely going to listen to their advice because they're doing this well and they want to share their knowledge with me. And like I said, I got comfortable asking for the advice and, you know, now we Facebook message each other. We look forward to conferences together and yeah. you know, being able to do things face to face or at least zooming and, you know, things yeah. along those lines where, you know, 20, 30 years ago, that would have been impossible. I would have been doing mm. maybe email, probably snail mail, but you know, yeah. I have four author friends in yeah. Australia, two author friends in New Zealand. I've got friends stretched all over Europe. I mean, you know, those aren't connections that I would have easily been able to make yeah. without social media, you mm. know, that gave me the opportunity to connect and have a really broad circle that helped me form that village. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Did you yeah. get any knockbacks along the way? Pardon? Did you get any knockbacks from people along the way that you've approached uh, via that group? Not really. Like I said, for me, historical romance has proven to be a very uh, welcoming genre. You know, I haven't dealt with some of the cutthroat stuff that I see even in within other romance genres or I hear about, um, you know, there, I belong to some of the bigger author groups on Facebook. And honestly, I go in there and I'll get good advice, but inevitably I turn around and go back to my village and I'm like, so what would you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think that this is These right? are my people. Have you heard about this, you know, yeah. and I, I come back home basically, mm -hmm. you know, and I go back to those trusted authors, but I know I haven't really gotten pushback, but I also know that that is not the case for everybody. No, you know? that's right. I know yeah, yeah. that there are definitely authors, even, you know, well-established authors who have tried to reach out to other well-established yeah. authors and gotten the, the blow off on it, you know? Um, so I just count myself fortunate that that has not been my experience, but yeah. I know it it can happen. Yeah. And I think if that does happen, you just know that they're not your part of your village yeah, and that's it, not a yeah, big deal. Yeah. It's not, it yeah. doesn't mean that you're, there's something wrong with you or, or them. It's just not at all. I mean, you know, just like in real life, you don't necessarily click with everybody you no, meet. That's you exactly don't necessarily right. click with yeah. everybody yeah. online. And that's all right. Because now, like I said, we can have this worldwide network as part of your village you're not limited to people, you know, within your zip code or your area yeah. code, you can reach out beyond that and form this village with people all over the place. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just the person you can meet at the local coffee shop or the tea shop mm -hmm. tea room. Mm -hmm. Is it, do you think it's important for it to be the same genre? Like, do you have any author friends who are not historical romance? I do, but I wouldn't necessarily consider them part of my village. They're my author friends friends mm -hmm. but or at least not sort of my core village that I go to when I'm like hey which sentences of this blurb should I cut out you know <laughs> or um hey this ad copy what do you think of this is it too wordy you know Brian Cohen says that I should and I yeah. love him to death 
but sometimes you just need that extra set of eyes yeah. Um, yeah. or, yeah. Hey, have, how do you run your book bub ads? Like, how do you target? You know, one of my friends said, well, actually I only target one person per week. And I was like, yeah, really? exactly. only one person. everyone's so different. Yeah. Yeah. So just being able to stick with people in my own genre, I think yeah. helps a lot is if I'm looking for the business advice, yeah. Yeah. you know, if I'm looking for just fellow authors, then it's a wider net that I cast, but, um, you know, just being with other historical romance authors just has been my niche that I've found. Yeah, no, I think that's true. So what about skill level? Like, are, are they varying skill levels or would you say you're now similar levels? Um, there's always, you know, a few new sort of emerging authors that will join in and, you know, we welcome them into the fold and say, you know, hey, ask whatever you want, look in the old threads for, for questions and answers, things like that. But I would, you know, there's some in my network who are USA Today and New York Times multi, you know, best-selling mm -hmm. Um, some who have only done it once and part of an anthology or some on their own, um, some who have not at all, but are still, you know, making very good money, mm -hmm. um, you know, because there's whole strategies behind that. But mm -hmm. I would say that we are pretty much on, on par with one another, um, as far as skill and business, but, I would say that there's kind of a, a range that we're not all exactly at the same point, but there's a healthy range and we all fit within that. Mm -hmm. And we're close enough that we are, um, we're peers. So when we do ask and offer advice, it's relevant to one another. You know, yeah. it's not, I tried this three years ago or mm, I don't understand what you mean. Like, yeah. you know, no, it's, yeah. it's on par. Yeah. And so, okay. So how many people are you talking like? So we could, a village could be 30 people. Yeah. It could, you know, like it could be, but I, I would say that my close circle is probably maybe about 15. Mm -hmm. Um, and within that there are, you know, like three or four that I feel extra close to. Yeah. Um, but that sort of 15 authors are the ones where we tend to um, orbit the same mm. trajectories. Mm. You know, we are in multiple groups together or we have other mutual author friends. We're in the same subgenre or we've done an anthology together, um, those sorts of things. But I would say that there's probably about 15 authors um, where I'm like, I could Facebook message any single one of them and be like, help, yeah. you know, yeah. what do I do? Yeah. So, do, you, do you think it could work yeah. with I mean, and not everybody's least? village is that big. Pardon? Yeah. Do you yeah, think not it could work with more big. people or could it work with fewer people? Like, what do you? I mean, I think that you could definitely have a larger village than that, especially yeah. if you write in multiple genres. Mm -hmm. um, or you have maybe multiple pen names, things like that. Like your village, you know, construct or the number of villages that you have might change depending upon, you know, what you're involved in. Um, so you might have a larger village. I personally have always been somebody who has a smaller, close network of friends. That's mm -hmm. me in real life. Um, I, <laughs> I'm an introvert who has learned how to navigate an extroverted world. Yeah. So, you know, I am quite happy being a hermit. So a, a small, close group is my preference as opposed to a big, wide, maybe not as close to one another group, but that's me. Um, but, you know, I think it kind of all sort of settles out, you know, it kind of, as you start making connections, you know, you start to gravitate towards one person or another. And like I said, we all know each other. Um, so it kind of balances itself out um, as to what your ideal village size may be. Mm -hmm. It may only be three or four people that you're really comfortable with or that you 
really, you know, respect their advice or they make you laugh or, you know, they commiserate with you, or it could be larger, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a predetermined number to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so if we're going with the village analogy, <clears throat> Are there people who have different roles? Do you think it just naturally happens? Or are there, you know, there's the one person that's really good at marketing and the one person that's really good at writing and the other person who's a slow writer and the other one who's a fast writer? Have you got that kind of around you or? Yeah, I mean, I like I said, I have a friend who I reached out to her and I was like, so wait, how do you do your BookBub ads? I want to know more about this. And she's super savvy with the BookBub ads. Um, I have another friend who has just, done amazingly with the Amazon ads. And so I'll ask her about that, or I'll kind of watch what she's doing and, you know, take notes as I, as those ads are popping up. Um, same thing with Facebook ads. I have one author friend who is just beyond phenomenal when it comes to organizing anthologies. Like she's the mother hen. She gets all her little chickadees in a row. She's fantastic with all the administrative work. She runs really fantastic ads. So she's like our go-to person, you know, oh, you want to do another Christmas anthology? Oh, well, where is, um, you know, so we have that particular person. I have another friend who, um, she has the best sense of humor and the best laugh you will ever <laughs> hear. Like you are broken if you don't laugh along with her. Um, so, you know, when, when you need a little comedic relief or you want to run, um, you know, some dialogue past her, cause she's naturally very humorous then that's who I go to. Um, these are also the same authors that I would recommend to my readers and be like, Hey, so-and-so has a new book out, even though mm -hmm. it might be, well, I call it Regency esque. So mm -hmm. anything that's Edwardian Regency Victorian, cause a lot of people don't actually know the dates. So mm -hmm. I call it Regency esque, or it might be somebody who, you know, writes erotica or something like that. I'll still be like, Hey, so-and-so has a new book or so-and-so has a freebie. Um, and just kind of go from there and, you know, being brave enough to reach out to authors that you might aspire to be, or you kind of fangirl over if they're in your genre and being like, Hey, you know, do you want to maybe join this Facebook group for cross promo or, you know, just thought yeah. I'd put it out yeah. there and more often than not, people will say yes. I mean, they might not become your new best friend forever, but they're yeah. usually pretty hospitable, you know, so. Yeah, I think part of being in a village is being a team player though, isn't it? You know, you can't just yeah. join a village and not offer. And take, yeah, if you take yeah, all the time. Take, take, take. I mean, even if you're a newbie, you can usually contribute something, um, yes, you know. As, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, you know, you might already come in with a background in, literature and writing, or you might yeah. already come in with a background in marketing or accounting, you know, another new author that I knew she doesn't write in my subgenre, but she was a member of that first big group that I joined where I was learning. She happens to be a tax attorney. She did a podcast a couple of years ago to help authors, you know, work yeah. their way through doing their taxes. I was like, sweet. You know, yeah. she was still very new, just like I was, but yeah. that was her expertise. Mm. Um, you know, she was able to offer that as somebody who has taught for a number of years. You know, a lot of times people will be like, I don't understand this. Can you just explain it to me? And that's what I've spent a career doing is explaining hard stuff to people in a way they're going to understand. Yeah. Um, or can you, you know, just read over this before I send it off to my betas or to my editor and see what you think, you know? Mm -hmm. So we all bring our own skill sets to mm -hmm. offer. Um, and, you know, it involves a little courage putting it out there. But again, generally, if you're willing to reciprocate people will often extend the offer. Yeah. Yeah. So what is, what is having an author village meant to you? you? You said something earlier. Oh my goodness. I, it made my career. Like there's no two ways about it. Had I not been invited into that first Facebook group because I reached out to an author that I enjoy. 
And in that group had another author not told me about this, you know, craft and business group. And this other author, who's the one who does all the anthologies, invited me to these two other groups. Like I'd still probably be in the deep end drowning right now. I certainly wouldn't be 27 books in. I probably would have called it quits. You know, I'm persistent. I would have gotten through that first series, but then I probably would have been like, mm. but I know that the knowledge that I have comes from the village. I know the courage I have to try out new things comes from having a village. I did have imposter syndrome in the beginning, but being part of this village also cured me of that. You know, um, I think we're still all prone to comparison itis, mm-hmm. but I don't feel like I have to compare as much because I know if they get a reader, they didn't take it away from me, you know, or if I got a reader, I didn't take it from them. And we're all moving at our own pace in this because we all have slightly different goals and ambitions and, you know, interests. And so I am absolutely certain that had I not found authors who were willing to accept me, and if I had not been willing to put myself out there, I would have drowned. Um, You know, I'm absolutely 100% certain that having a network of author friends has made my career. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we often say that about ourselves yeah, though, don't absolutely. we you know for me i would not have self-published and got as far as i have without these guys yeah. you know yeah yeah i think we all, again we all learned it together kind of yeah. thing and we all had we all brought different strengths to the learning process if you like you know yeah. and i think that can because you can't learn all the things all at once mm-hmm. in the same way yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it does help to kind of divvy up that doesn't it they do well, say absolutely. the sum of the go sometimes the sum like you know the the sum of the individuals is is actually the the sum of the group is greater than the sum of the individuals you know what i mean so mm-hmm. so we created something yeah. bigger than than what yeah what we absolutely absolutely and you know i feel like my friends who are in this village would say exactly that that you know they feel like they really have found success because of the supports and connections that they've made um, mm-hmm. through having their own village, yeah. um, mm-hmm. you know, and so there is that give and take and each person brings something and then the sum of the group is greater than the mm-hmm. individual parts, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. you know. And sometimes yeah. not, and not everyone that's in your village will be in another person's village. It's all interconnected and yeah. yeah, it is. And that in of itself is wonderful because it helps broaden your opportunities. You know, mm. I know that I had an opportunity to publish a book with a hybrid publisher, and I would not have had that opportunity if another friend hadn't said, Hey, they're looking for new authors, you mm. know, and just kind of put out a post in yeah. general. And I was like, Ooh, kind of want to get to know them and I wouldn't have felt um probably brave enough to mm. approach them otherwise because I you know still a little starstruck yeah. by the author who runs that yeah. hybrid um but yeah. you know I yeah find your village find yeah your village. <laughs> so so I want to talk a little bit and it's not I don't mean to be depressing but are there are there any challenges or downsides of being part of being in this kind of interconnected village I think the comparisonitis and the imposter syndrome mm. um I think that in the beginning it almost feeds it as much as it gets rid of it mm-hmm. um you know when you're entering into this network of authors who might be more experienced than you or already are connected to one another, Mm. it can feel a little difficult, you know, sort of infiltrating this established group. And if you are an aspiring or an emerging author and you do join a group where, you know, there's more experienced authors in there, maybe even authors that you enjoy reading, um, it can feel a little intimidating and that kind of feeds your imposter syndrome Mm -hmm. but as much as it might feed it it will help cure it because the things that you will get from that 
network and those supports that help you improve your career and help you take it to the next level, you know, all of a sudden you're sitting at the grownups table, you know, you're not sitting at the kid table anymore. So I think there's that in the very beginning, um, is finding that, that balance, but generally speaking, again, from my experiences, I haven't had a downside. You know, I have very trustworthy authors who are in my village. I'm not worried about, you know, intellectual property rights or, you know, pilfering Mm -hmm. readers and things like that. Uh, That has not been my experience. Mm -hmm. So honestly, I really don't think that there is a downside. And there's always, there's always that time in your life when you're the new person, that's always going to be awkward and a little, you know, you know, you have to take your time to, to get in, to get in, into the group, don't you? And become mm-hmm. part of it. They have to yeah. know that they can trust you as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It I think you get back, doesn't it, to starting school, like that being that yeah. five-year-old or six-year-old, it's that yeah. feeling where, whether it's joining a new group or whether it's like starting a new job, you know, in the outside world, it, it, mm. it's very easy to regress back to that little five-year-old, isn't it? And mm. everybody knows where the toilets are, but you don't. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny you should say that because for probably the first like 10 books that I released, those release days were like being the mom of the new kid and wondering mm. if your book is going to have somebody to eat with at lunch. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, it's exactly so nobody, no, more nobody wants to sit with her. <laughs> and it's, you know, as I became more established and, you know, I had friends who were releasing books too. I was like, okay, you can get past this. Like, you know, you've built your readership and you know, people are buying your books. Like, it's okay. Your book yeah. will have somebody to sit with at lunch. You know? <laughs> but don't we, we still panic, don't we? Oh, you know, yeah. I just, you know. I just, I've just put out, I don't know what number, something. 40 but, something. Um, 40 something. But, and the beaters are just starting to come in and, you know, and, and that, and I'm just like, oh, do they like yeah. it? What if they don't like it? You know, after this long yes. and I'm just like, oh, you know, yeah. what is it wrong, definitely, you know? they yeah. help with the frayed nerves. Oh. You know? Yeah, they, yeah. you know, talk you off mm. the ledge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We haven't successfully talked Wendy off the ledge. No, no, books, no, so no. I just think it's her pattern. But I yeah. think I think your village gives you courage, and you know, I firmly believe that if you mm-hmm. if you're someone who doesn't like to stand alone and 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 needs backup, like I'm someone who needs backup. I need someone to say, you know, mm-hmm. you, you got this, or you're doing this right, or this is how you, you know. I'm one of those sort of people, and I think that's what your village will give you mm-hmm. that strength. And I think it's true what you said. For me, I don't think I would have achieved the excess I had achieved without these guys, without my village, you know, and, and that's mm. because they pushed me on and they, they, I've learned from them. And I think, you know, if you're starting out, it's vital that you have someone in your corner. Mm. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, even if you are a very introverted person, which a number of my author friends are, um, like I said, I'm an extrovert who's learned how to navigate an extroverted world. You don't have to be on all the time, you know, like if you were face to face with somebody and you you have to be sociable and outgoing and, you know, follow along or start the conversation with environments like this, where we can leverage social media, it's there. I don't think there's that same pressure on the dynamics as well. So if you're not a super outgoing person, you still have some anonymity. You can pop into a Facebook group and, you know, drop in your message or your comment, or Mm -hmm. you can Facebook message or zoom when you want to. Um, So even if you're kind of more reserved, there's still ways to build your village without the pressure of being face to face. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, again, that's something that you wouldn't be able to have if you couldn't have global connections. You would be limited to finding authors, you know, within driving distance or something like that. And there's no guarantee that you'll find people in your genre or that you'll click with them. So, you know, you can cast your, your web wide and, and build your village that way. And it might just be one person at a time, or Mm -hmm. you might stumble into a group that's already established. You know, you don't know until you start trying. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Wise words. Wise words. So can you, so you've given, you've peppered a few 
pieces of advice through our discussion but are there any other ways like so I think the question people say is how do I find my tribe how do I how do I do this so you've talked about a little bit about social media and stuff is there any other pieces of advice you can give around that yeah I mean as far as the social media side is concerned you know um look in Facebook there's so many groups there mm-hmm. that you're bound to, you know, if you throw a stone, you're going to hit something. Um, look for, you know, genre groups, and some of them are going to be geared towards authors. Some are going to be geared towards readers. Um, you know, join the groups, kind of read the room, get a temperature on it. Um, you know, also, if you are doing online or in-person conferences, that's also an opportunity to start reaching out to people, um, you know, seeing how they interact or, you know, seeing the comments that they might be putting in on a Zoom and see, oh, you know, that's exactly what I was just thinking. And so-and-so typed it or said it yeah. and kind of looking at it that way. Um, I mean, I know the hardest part is that first step of reaching out. Mm. Especially from the woman who has a fear of rejection, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, putting yourself out there is hard, mm. but worst case scenario is either you don't get an answer or they say, thank you. No, thank you. And mm. you move on to the next yeah, person. Next Maybe episode, they just aren't yeah. meant to be in your village or not mm. in your village yet. Um, but you know, if you have the opportunity to attend, um, you know, as you feel comfortable, and available things like multi-author book signings you know that's another opportunity to start to meet people and usually they might be within proximity to you as mm. well um but you know it's it's a chance to branch out a little bit um you know as as the world's starting to reopen again um you know i planning some events and i'm looking forward to meeting a few authors that are friends of mine that I've never actually seen, you know, live and in person, um, but they're part of my village. You know, they are people that I respect and, and whose, um, sage advice I listen to, or Mm. they just let me kvetch when I need to read about something, you know, can you believe this one star reading? Look how funny it is. What are they thinking? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, usually it's like, Hey, you want to laugh? Take a look at this. So, yeah. you know, cause yeah. if I don't laugh, I'll cry. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Cause I think, so you mentioned it before, but that fear of rejection is actually quite a big thing. And I think it probably holds a lot of us back. Mm. So is there any particular ways that you, you just do it? Like, are there, have you got any kind of tips on how to get over that? You know, I think, um, joining the Facebook groups and kind of, um, not lurking, you want to engage, but kind of getting a a chance to read the room and to look at the posts that are coming up and, you know, slowly start to comment in there or, you know, ask questions, things like that. That's a good way to stick your toe in the water without like really diving in and being like, Hey, look at me. Um, I think that's a (laughs) pretty, that's a pretty innocuous way to start. Um, and you know, you'll start to, to see who is active in the room and you can start to kind of get to know them even before you engage. So I think that that's a really good way to, um, embrace your forced extroverted side, um, Mm -hmm. without, you know, too much fear of, of rejection, you know, just start to kind of make your presence known, um, you know, slowly, but surely at your comfort. Yeah. Um, and if that does mean lurking for a little bit, that's okay. Mm. You know, but mm. at some point you do have to bite the bullet and yeah. actually put in that first comment or mm. ask that first question or, you know, share something. Um, and so, be prepared you know, for, for, for people to say no, because that's, that's their right. And, yeah. and you know maybe you're not what they're looking for but somebody else will be and, and if yeah. not now then further down the track absolutely mm-hmm. and you know with social media you at least have the anonymity of nobody mm-hmm. seeing you mm-hmm. if they say no yeah but I think more <laughs> often than not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes but I think more often than not um 
many authors do realize they have the self reflection and introspection to know that they are where they are because somebody else reached out a hand. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think a lot of authors are willing to at least point you in the right direction. You know, I got Mm -hmm. lucky and some authors grabbed me by the sleeve and were like, come on, Celeste, this is where you need to be. (laughs) But, you know, at the very least, they might say, hey, go try this or, you know, have you heard about this? And that's just step one, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's not um, it's not a sprint. It doesn't have to be. You know, if you're a tortoise, you're still going to be the hair. So you'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> Great advice. So how do you, um, like, I'm just thinking, how do you know if, like, maybe you want to fire someone from your village? <laughs> like, if, or, do you, know, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just thinking, yeah. you know, if there's a person who's a little bit negative or, you know, I'm being negative yeah, right actually, now by even asking this question, but yeah. Yeah, I actually have had to do that uh, once, mm, twice. Um And luckily they weren't like really inner echelon people Mm -hmm. in my village, but, um, we float in the same circles and I hate the idea of ghosting somebody and just like never responding again. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but some, sometimes that is the best thing to do to Mm -hmm. just cut ties, but I don't necessarily um, you know, withdraw from groups that they're in or um, yeah. unfollow them, things like that. I just don't actively engage with them, mm-hmm. um, you know, and so I just, I kind of put that distance when it's somebody that I, I don't feel comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Um, every once in a while, there'll be somebody like in my, my circle of friends where we're like, you know, mm-hmm maybe we don't like some of the things that she stands for. We don't feel comfortable with that. Or dude, she's such a negative Nelly. Like Mm. she only comes to us to tell us all the things we've done wrong. You know, Yeah. we say, you know, thank you, but no, thank you. But for the most part, just graciously back away, you know, know, let it go. Yeah, because I think what you're kind of looking for is a group of people that can support you and that you trust, right? Like that's, mm, yeah. that's kind of the basics of what we're, we're trying to create um, when we Absolutely. create the author village. So you want to find people that are going to be not, there. Not people necessarily that yeah. are yes people that are going to agree mm. to everything you say and do, but people that um, yeah lift you up and, and push you along. Yeah, mm. I mean, people who are like-minded, um, yeah. people who are generous and who are yeah. open-minded to hearing your suggestions mm-hmm. as well like yeah I really do feel like these authors that are in my village they are my friends they're yeah. not just colleagues or peers mm-hmm. they are my friends and yeah you know I've been publishing for three years now which I know in the grand scheme of things is I'm a toddler in the business um but you know over those three years my friendships have grown you know Mm. and so Mm. they enrich me in a lot of ways but it wasn't like it was immediate you know I didn't suddenly find 20 soulmates but Mm. it definitely um it just is very fulfilling to know there are other people out there who are like-minded who have had similar experiences who are compassionate you know and they're mm. willing to to offer you advice or at least listen to you you know yeah. be willing yeah. to reciprocate you know that's mm. that's the key thing don't just ask give oh. mm. yeah and remember that good things take time yeah so you have to work at relationships whatever they are that's exactly absolutely right. absolutely yeah that's awesome. So, so we're, we're rocking into the end of the podcast here, but I just want to ask you one, like, is there any one final amazing piece of advice that you can give our listeners? Like she's just given us so much advice. <laughs> <laughs> just one way to wrap it all up. Into, yeah. You know. Yeah. You need to find your village. <laughs> Plain Perfect. and simple. And that. again, <laughs> you may, your village might just be one other person. It might be two other people. It might be 30, 40, a hundred other people. That's, that's you. That's what you want, but find it because otherwise it's incredibly isolating to do this. You know, whether this is your first, sorry, full-time job or, you know, a a part-time job, whatever it is, you're not generally going into a workplace to do this. 
You know, mm-hmm. you're writing alone. Yeah. Um, you're not side by side with colleagues that you can run something by or be like, oh, you want to go and get lunch together today? You know, there's not other people just down the hallway that you can ask. There's not necessarily somebody you can ring and be like, hey, can you pop over to my Mm. office or my cubicle? Like those sorts of things. So you need that, you know, even if the most introverted person, I always think of, and this is the English teacher in me, I always think of John Donne's poem, no man is an island unto himself. Like Mm -hmm. you are not. And there are people out there who will be on your side and who will help you out and that will appreciate what you have to offer too. Um, So find your village. Perfect. Awesome. So true. Well said. Yeah. True. Awesome. So so if someone wants to um, come find you, Celeste, where is the best place to come and say hi or find your books? Oh, I'm all over the place. I mean, at the bare minimum, (laughs) Google me and I'll show up. Um, You can check out my website, celestebarkley.com you can find me on facebook i have an awesome readers group called celeste barkley's ladies of yore i'm not on twitter a super amount that's not really my favorite one um i am on instagram i am now on clubhouse and i like need a 12-step program to walk away from that because i'm on it way too much but it's an awesome networking site and it's all audio so i don't even have to like put my face together to, to get on there. Um, you know, you can reach out and contact me through my website. You can find me on Goodreads and BookBub and binge books and, um, what else? All the Amazon. All, all the <laughs> <places>. there. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Google me. Awesome. Thank you very much. That's been great. And so shall we, can we be found? Um, we can be found uh, on at Spa Girls Podcast, first of all, but uh, also on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Clubhouse, we haven't dived into yet. Mm-hmm. I keep hearing about amazing things, so yeah. that could be a topic for the future. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to find someone who's a Clubhouse expert mm. to talk to us about that. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Celeste, for coming in and joining thank us. Thank you for having today. me. No awesome. worries. We've enjoyed it all. And so thank you everyone for listening to another episode of the Spa Girls podcast. Um, we'll be back again next week. But for now, farewell. Wow. Bye. 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 Bye.